Hey everyone, Ryan Mentz here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Sony FS5 Mark II. Now this is a camera that I've been using for the past month, uh, filming some birds. Got the trusty Sony 200-600 on here, and the 1.4x teleconverter. Uh, I've been using that on and off, and uh, I just kind of want to run through some things that I liked and didn't like about it. I'm kind of coming to this from a perspective of a Sony Alpha shooter. I used the Sony A9 and the A7R 3 to film a Green Heron video recently. So I'm kind of uh, coming to it from uh, a perspective of having that hybrid camera style uh, to the cinema camera. And so if you're in a similar position, you might find this video useful. Um, if you don't, uh, you're gonna have to watch it anyways, I'm sorry, that's just the rules. So let's get started. Alright, so let's start off with the positives. And first up, the uh, thing I was most looking forward to, I guess, in the beginning was the control panel here, where you have all the buttons and switches for all the important controls laid out. Um, it's super nice to have. I like that they're on the side rather than the back, like a Sony Alpha camera. Um, they're, the buttons aren't quite as customizable to do all these sorts of different things as the Sony Alpha cameras. But there's a difference that there's some like preset switches here, which is kind of nice. So for like the neutral density filter or the uh, ISO or gain, there's a like a low, medium, high uh, preset that you can customize what the preset means and easy to flip through them instead of uh, kind of scrubbing a dial. Uh, you can scrub a dial to do these things too, but uh, it's just nice to be able to flip a switch and you're there. Next thing is gonna be this uh, kind of tilt everywhere LCD screen. Uh, it's definitely bigger than a Sony Alpha camera, which is nice. It's not huge, uh, but what's great is you can uh, mount this basically anywhere. There's a few attachment points built in. Um, otherwise, you can uh, get some third-party accessory and kind of mount that anywhere you want. But anyways, I have it in line with the lens. So if you're filming wildlife or uh, just small animals or small anything, and you have a telephoto lens, your angle of view is super, super slim. So having the LCD screen in line with the lens, uh, like on the same plane, makes it a lot easier to find things. When you have a swivel screen like the A7S III, and it's kind of on the side, or if you mount this onto the side, it's really difficult to find anything because what you're looking at um, with through the telephoto lens is going to be, it's a little off center uh, or off angle from where the you're looking at the viewfinder then. So it just, that disconnect is really hard to get used to. I never was able to do it. I tried for like two weeks, like half the time I had this uh, hooked onto the side and I just could not do it. So uh, having this in line is awesome. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that the A7S III uh, decided to do a swivel screen instead of the flip up. Next up is the, uh, how it's lightweight. Uh, it, I don't know what it looks like, I guess, on camera. To me, it kind of looked like it was a beefy, heavy body uh, coming from the Sony Alphas. Uh, but that's just not true at all when you get it. It's like, imagine this just being hollow plastic and that's kind of the way it feels. It's it's super light, especially when you have the, uh, the battery that it actually ships with if you buy it. Uh, the BP U30. Uh, this is a really small battery. It's heavier than the, like a Sony Z battery for alpha cameras, but for the power you get, it's uh, it's negligible for uh, putting this on here. Doesn't add too much weight. There is a larger battery that you can also do. Um, this is the BP U60, and this thing is gonna last you a long, long time, but you're gonna pay for it with the weight. Um, so I mostly just use this, which lasts me about, um, well, I didn't drain it to the end. I usually shoot for around like two hour periods, uh, maybe three hours, and this will last me through that, but it, it'll drain down to like 20, 30%. And that's usually when, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm gonna be charging this as soon as I'm done with the session for so I'm ready for the next one. So technically it uses a full battery, even though it doesn't drain all the way. This thing will probably last you two or three sessions. It's a little bit overkill. I, I thought I would use this um, which is why I got this as well, but I uh, didn't use this at all past the first few days after I realized that I'm just carrying around all this extra weight for no reason. Um, but it's also a nice thing I should mention is that you have battery options, like built-in battery options, 
rather than the Sony Alpha cameras with the Z batteries, um, your, your option is uh, get the grip so you can do two batteries um, or you can do the one battery, uh, but it's all the same battery size, capacity and everything. Um, it's kind of nice to have that option where you can just add a bigger battery if you don't want to carry around more batteries. It's just a different way of looking at it. It's pretty, pretty neat. neat. Uh, next up is going to be the quick assembly and disassembly of the handle and the grip, which you can't see because it's on the other side. Um, so the handle, it just uses these slump screws. It pops right off like that. And then the connector here is for the uh, LCD screen. And I'm at this at the wrong angle, so it's gonna seem like it's hard, but it's actually not. <laughs> so the handle comes off super easy. Uh, throw this in a bag uh, wherever you want, and then the body can be separate. And then likewise, uh, the grip on the other side here also comes off really easy. Oh, can you see the grip? Can you see the grip there? Okay. Uh, it also comes off really easy. Um, I normally just shot this thing without the grip at all. Uh, so I'm also at a weird angle to do this from here. <laughs> but this also comes off and there's a little wire connector that's just a, I'm not sure if I can do this with one hand, one finger. Uh, I can't, but it's just like a little, like 2.5 millimeter, I don't know. Little guy that just pops right out. And then, this is awkward to do on camera. The pressure, right, there we go. So um, that's super convenient. Uh, I would always break down the camera to fit in my bag just cause it wasn't, uh, it, couldn't, it can't fit when it's all together like this. But since it's so easy to kind of put everything together, um, it's kind of not a big deal, uh, which is nice. So you can break things down if you want to. Otherwise, if you have a bag or whatever big enough, you don't have to, I'll let you, it's fine. All right, so the built-in variable ND filters, uh, also a huge, huge bonus, um, kind of like the bonus that would make you want to buy this instead of an ELF camera, if there was like a number one spot, maybe. Uh, the built-in variable ND filters is super nice because it's got uh, two stop to seven stop. So no more dealing with filters on the front of your lens. You can just, uh, with a flick of a switch, it's going to be turning on the ND filters internally. Then you got a little dial that you can use the variable ND. Otherwise there's the preset switches like I talked about. Um, just super convenient. Uh, with this lens, and especially with the teleconverter, which makes this like an F9 setup, uh, it's not as required, but if you're shooting faster lenses, you got an F4 lens, you're using, you know, tinier lenses that are like 1.4, that ND filter is going to come in handy uh, pretty much all the time you're shooting, I'm sure. So, uh, huge advantage to this over the Sony Alpha cameras. So next thing is going to be cache recording, which is super, super helpful. Uh, so it's in the slow motion, super slow motion mode of the camera. And you, if you've used like a Sony RX series camera, you've maybe played with this before. It's when you are, uh, the camera is always recording to a cache, but it's not actually recording to the memory card. And then when you do press record, you can have it so it records the past eight seconds of what just happened. So as you can imagine for like bird photography, you're waiting for something to happen. You have you have the bird in your frame and maybe you're waiting for it to take off or something. Um, or you're uh, set up on a perch and you're waiting for a bird to land on that perch. Um, you can just sit there, have the camera keep on rolling. And then as soon as that thing happens, you press the record button and you have it. You don't have to waste so much memory. Uh, you don't have to drain the batteries uh, as much as, you know, doing an actual record does. Uh, it's just... It comes in handy so much. It's just a little too bad that it's only for super slow motion. So it'd be nice to just kind of record cache if you're just doing like a regular speed 4K or something. And then uh, instead of having that huge, huge file at the end, you just hit record. You got like eight seconds of that real time 4K footage. Next up is going to be full HD 10-bit 422. Uh, that's just uh, really great. I know the newer cameras have it. This is a few years old, so uh, you gotta give it a little bit of break. It does do 4K in 8-bit 420. I know that's not as great. And for me, I just shoot uh, full HD 1080p most of the time anyways, so it's uh, it works out for me. Uh, I'd rather, I guess, have that 10-bit 422 
working with that instead of the resolution of 4K. Uh, you might differ in that opinion, and that's fine. Just letting you know what's out there. But uh, yeah, the colors look great. It does have like a, it's not a Venice color science, it's Venice-like color science. Uh, I think it looks great. I've been shooting this, I use uh, Cine 1 and Cine 4. Uh, so Cine 1's for like regular scenes, Cine 4 is for low light. It kind of just brings up the shadows. Next thing's gonna be uh, that kind of touched on it, but everything's just kind of ready to go. There's n You don't have to do a lot of add-ons to this camera to get it to um, a video uh, heavy camera, kind of like you do with the Sony Alpha cameras. So you got uh, this uh, move anywhere external monitor, kind of technically it's small, but you can move it anywhere and uh, that really comes in handy. You got the uh, microphone shock mount, you got XLR inputs, you got SDI out. Um, it's just like, uh, you got the built-in ND filters. It's just ready to go for uh, what you need to do without uh, having to make an additional purchases. So like, yeah, sure, the Sony a7S III is 3,500, whatever, but then you have to add on that $600 XLR adapter, and then you want to add on the ND filters uh, and if you still want to use the lens hood, you kind of have to do it with a matte box instead. So like the uh, Polar Pro Base Camp, that's $700. So it just goes up and up in price. If you want to add a cage um, to add more uh, mounting places, that's more money. This one you can uh, mount directly into the camera body. There's a bunch of holes for that as well. Um, so it's just nice that uh, it's kind of like a one and done purchase. I know you can uh, keep on going with it, that's fine. but. Uh, for a lot of people, you may just uh, be looking at the base price between these two, but it's a little bit uh, misleading in that way. And then finally is the E-mount, which is great because I've come to realize that I'm dictating my uh, cinema camera purchase on this lens. So if I can't shoot with the 200-600, um, I don't want it because I'm just in love with this lens. It's definitely the best lens that Sony has ever made. Um, it's just, uh, it's incredible to do video with as well. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into a review of this lens for video because I'm thinking of doing that separately. But yeah, just the E-mount that you can use all your Sony Alpha lenses that you may have already accumulated. You can pop that right onto the Cinecamps as well. Uh, just super handy to have one mount for everything. First thing on the don't like column is something that should have been on the, the do like column. And uh, that's going to be the fact that you can set this camera to show you your uh, shutter angle rather than using the shutter speed. And so uh, you can just set it to have like a 180 degree shutter angle. And that way you never have to, you know, double your frame rate in order to get the shutter speed. Um, it just makes things super simple. You can flip through all the modes and you don't have to keep on adjusting that shutter speed to make sure it's the 180 degree. You can just set it to 180 degree and you're good. The problem with that though is that there's a, a known bug. Sony has published that they know about this bug, but they've never fixed it for whatever reason. And that's going to be uh, when you're in super slow motion mode, what it displays on the screen never goes above 80 degrees. Is it 80 degrees? 85 degrees. It'll always show 85 degrees when you're super slow motion with the shutter angle uh, displayed. And that's just not going to do it. So I use the super slow motion sometimes, and I don't want to be flipping between uh, shutter speed and shutter angle because you have to go through the menu to do that, and it's this whole thing. So I just kept on using shutter speed, even though there's a much better option in here where you can use the shutter angle. Uh, so it's a downside that I can't actually use the, the better system, uh, even though it's there right in front of me. And then next, I uh, don't like on the how on the LCD screen, um, you can toggle the display to show you kind of different things, kind of like the Sony Alpha cameras, where you can see uh, there's not a leveler, which I should add in, that's a downside too. There's not a leveler, um, but it does have like a histogram uh, screen or you have like the display everything screen and kind of one in between those two. Uh, but I don't like any of the options really that it gives me. I just keep it on the show everything screen most of the time. But the problem with that is it shows too much. And uh, there's like this comical screen when you're in super slow motion mode, it will say across like the whole screen, super slow motion in all caps. Like I don't need to see that. Just at least short, like abbreviate that. 
Um, it's just kind of funny, uh, but it covers everything. So if you're shooting animals and stuff and you got to get that focus and everything, um, it covers up the animal a lot of time if you're trying to shoot like a rule of thirds and stuff. Uh, it's just really annoying and gets in the way. I wish there was a way to like customize what gets shown, what you can hide away. Uh, that'd make it a lot better. Next up is going to be uh, also having to do with slow motion again. Uh, as you can tell, I used it quite a bit. But when you go into a slow motion mode on the camera, either the regular slow and quick or the super slow motion, uh, if you go into the menu and exit the menu, or if you turn off the camera and turn it back on, it doesn't remember that you, that's the last thing you were in. So it'll go back to the regular shooting mode. And that becomes a problem because you're going to be using a higher shutter speed in those slow motion modes. And then if you forget and you like exit the menu and you're back into shooting, now you're shooting at like a 24p or whatever, but you're shooting it at like 250ths of a second or like 500ths of a second. And your footage is gonna look like crap. So it's uh, it's really annoying that it doesn't remember. It seems like it'd be an easy fix, uh, just uh, being able to remember that you were in slow motion once you do those things. And then speaking of memory, uh, another thing is gonna be that there's no memory recall function like you do with the Sony Alpha cameras. Uh, so you have like, on the Sony Alpha, you have like one, two, three on the top dial. And it makes it super easy if you're doing video to like, you know, three can be your 4K 24 and two can be your uh, 4K 120 on the A7S 3 And uh, one can be like full HD 240p, uh, stuff like that, you know, and it just makes it like one click switch, super nice. Uh, with this one, there's no memory recall at all, so you have to dig through the venue to, in order to switch those things up. Uh, it just takes a lot more time when you're used to a Sony Alpha camera. Um, so it'd be nice to see some kind of a, I don't know, like a button that you could press and like kind of toggle through uh, some different saved modes. And then the, the next thing I've written on here, I already mentioned this, I guess, the cache recording. I wish you could do that with regular speed stuff too. So I'll just kind of skip over that. Uh, next up is going to be, I would like 4K 10-bit 422, uh, but you have to remember this is a camera that's a product of its time. I think moving forward from today, we're going to see 4K 10-bit 422 is kind of now, uh, since some cameras have it, it's kind of the standard. And moving forward, everything's going to have it, otherwise it's going to be, you know, made fun of on the forums. So, uh, this camera doesn't have it, we can 100% expect that the FX6 does have 4K 10-bit 422. Next up is gonna be, yeah. So the overall uh, feel of this camera, it's light, it's nice, but it feels very cheap. It's It's got like this cheap plasticky feel with everything, the buttons and the dials, just not great. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that light, the being lightweight, it doesn't help because you know, lightweight things kind of feel cheap already, but yeah, just having like these plasticky buttons and the dials just uh, does not give you a lot of confidence. Um, and speaking of that, that there's no weather sealing with this camera, or at least little weather sealing. I know Sony's official position, they've answered this, I think, on their, their own website about this camera, uh, which is like, is this camera weatherproof or dust proof? And there's like, no, this camera's not weatherproof and dustproof, but that's like an extreme, like almost no cameras and no cameras at all, maybe, are weatherproof and dustproof. Um, yeah, so that doesn't really answer any questions. I just want to know if you can, you know, have it in some light rain, uh, have it at the beach or something. Uh, but no, they, they didn't really help out with that answer. So I'm just assuming that there's no weather ceiling at all. So if it starts raining, you better throw a cover on or something. It starts snowing get a cover on. Um, next up is going to be that the monitor is not a touchscreen. And this is actually my last one. So the monitor is not a touchscreen, which uh, the Sony Alpha cameras, um, I know it's kind of limited, but uh, they do have a touchscreen. So what I like especially about those is that you can double tap and it will enlarge the image. Um, it doesn't actually record that enlarged image. It's just nice to check focus with that. And that's the main thing I'm missing from here. Uh, there's a button they can use to do it, uh, it's just a little bit slower and you have to deal with the button instead of just tapping right on the screen of exactly where you want to zoom in and stuff. So yeah, that'll do it. Hopefully this video helped if you're considering the Sony FS5 Mark II, at least compared to the Sony Alpha cameras. Uh, personally, I really prefer this style of body over those. And uh, yeah, I have a video that I filmed with this camera, the 200-600. 
And so check that out. I'll have it linked in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.